lower statin. Lower statin is obtained from the Aspergillus terius as well as it is also coming from the Monascus ruber. And lower statin is an anti-hyperlipidemic agent belong to the class of statins. This drug is going to inhibit the biosins of the cholesterol within the liver. Cholesterol is going to be biosynthesized through the mevalonic acid pathway within the liver and here the HMG CoA is going to be converted into mevalonic acid by the one of the important enzyme HMG CoA reductase enzyme. This enzyme is the rate limiting enzyme so when this enzyme is going to be inhibited the cholesterol biosynthesis can be inhibited within the liver. And lower statin is going to inhibit this HMG CoA reductase enzyme thereby it controls the biosynthesis of the cholesterol within the liver. And Two related drugs are the simvastatin and pravastatin which are obtained from the lower statin so they are the semi-synthetic derivatives of the lower statin. Next one is the dicomerol. Dicomerol is coming from the melilotus officinalis which is the sweet clover and when the sweet clover is going to be spoiled it produces the dicomerol. Dicomerol is having this structure and we can observe it is having the hydroxy comarin ring and which is present two times so it is a bis-hydroxy comarin. Bis-hydroxy comarin has shown the anticoagulant property and based on that one of the synthetic analog is going to be prepared and this is the warfarin. And warfarin is again the hydroxy comarin derivative with a substitution at the third position. How this warfarin acts? Warfarin acts as a vitamin K antagonist and this drug is going to inhibit the vitamin K reductase enzyme. This enzyme is very important for the recycling of the vitamin K. And when this enzyme is going to be inhibited, vitamin K epoxide cannot be reduced so that the recycling of the vitamin K is going to be inhibited. And what is the role of this vitamin K? Vitamin K is very important for the gamma carboxylation of the factors like the 2, 7, 9 and 10. And when the warfarin is going to inhibit the vitamin K reductase enzyme, it inhibits the activation of these factors so that coagulation cannot take place. So that's why warfarin acts as an oral anticoagulant. Next one is the cocaine. Cocaine is coming from the erythroxylum coca and this cocaine again belongs to the tropane alkaloids because it is having a tropane ring system. This cocaine acts by multiple mechanisms and one of the important mechanisms is to block the uptake one. It acts as an uptake 1 inhibitor at the adrenergic nerve terminals so that it is going to inhibit the reuptake of the norepinephrine. By this it increases the levels of the norepinephrine within the synaptic cleft. And another mechanism of the cocaine is to block the sodium channels which are responsible for the sensory transmission. And because of this activity cocaine can act as a local anesthetic. And cocaine can also act at the CNS levels and it produces euphoria. Because of this, this drug can produce a addiction and it acts as a drug of abuse. That's why cocaine use is going to be confined as a local anesthetic. But today again cocaine is not preferred as a local anesthetic and we have few of the synthetic derivatives like the procaine, benzocaine and tetracaine which are the ester derivatives and can be used as local anesthetics. Next one is the kelin. Kelin is coming from the Ami Visnaga. And kelin is uh, not used in the allopathy, but we have the synthetic analogs like the chromoglycate and nidochromyl are widely used in the allopathy. These two drugs are acting like the mast cell stabilizers. So these drugs are going to stabilize the mast cells so that these cells are going to be freezed and they cannot undergo the degranulation. And when the mast cells are not degranulated, they cannot release the histamine. And you know histamine is one of an important inflammatory mediator so that inflammation can be controlled by the chromoglycate and nidochromyl. That's why these two drugs even they are not the antihistamines but they can control the histamine so they are called as mast cell stabilizers. And these drugs are found useful in the treatment of allergic rhinitis, hay fever as well as in the prophylaxis of the asthma. Next one is the tetrahydrocannabinol THC. Tetrahydrocannabinol is coming from the cannabis sativa commonly called as uh, hemp plant and this THC is having some psychoactive properties. Because of the psychoactive properties, it, it is going to act like an analgesic as well as mild tranquilizer. And this cannabis plant is also having some of the other components like the cannabinol and cannabidiol, which are having mild activity compared with the THC. And we have one of a synthetic derivative coming from the cannabis that is a nabilone. Nabilone is not used for the psychoactive purpose, but it is mainly used as an anti-emetic. 
next one is the Senna. Senna is coming from the Cassia species like the Cassia Senna. And the Senna is mainly having the sinusoids. Actually, Senna is not a drug. It is a combination of uh, so many types of drugs like the sinusoids. And Senna is used as a stimulant purgative. And similarly, another drug is the Cascara. Cascara is coming from the Ramnus persiana, which, which is again having the cascorosides and again used as a stimulant purgative. Both the Senna and Cascara are the anthraquinone glycosides, which are used as the stimulant purgatives. Similarly, rhubarb is another drug and extract of the rhubarb can be used as again astringent as well as a purgative. Similarly, aloe. Aloe is again coming from the aloe species like the aloe barbadensis and uh, aloe officinalis and so many species are there and so many varieties are there. And aloe is having the important chemical constant barbaloin. This barbaloin can be used as an emollient and nowadays aloe has proved so many important properties like an emollient anti ulcer agent anti cancer agent and um, mineralocorticoid uh, properties so many properties are attributed to the yellow and again yellow is not a single drug it is an extract and it is mainly having the barbaloin as the chemical constant st john's wort st john's wort is coming from the hypericium species and it's one of the important chemical constant is the hypericin hypericin is going to act as an antidepressant and particularly it is one of an herbal preparation used as an antidepressant. It works like an SSRIs like the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. But this drug should not be combined with the other antidepressant because it leads to so many drug interactions. So it can be used as an herbal preparation the treatment of depression whenever the other antidepressants are not proved useful. Next one is artemisinin. Artemisinin is coming from the Chinese uh, herb like the Artemisia annua and it is uh, having an endoperoxide bridge. This endoperoxide bridge when it is going to be cleaved it is going to produce the free radicals. As we know free radicals are going to damage the DNA and these free radicals produce some toxicity to the malarial parasite. So Artemisinin is used as an anti-malarial and this drug is a fast acting anti-malarial. And artemether and artether are the semi-synthetic analogs of the artemisinin which are again found useful in the treatment of malaria. Next one is the colchicine. Colchicine is coming from the colchicum atom nail and this plant is having the colchicine as well as demicolcine. These two drugs again going to acting on the mitotic division. These drugs act like the wing alkaloids. Beta tubules are going to be polymerized to the microtubules and colcin and demicolcin are going to inhibit this polymerization step thereby they inhibit the microtubule formation and these drugs are used as anti-gout agents next one is the ephedrine ephedrine is coming from the ephedra species like the ephedra sinica ephedra officinalis so many types of species are there and we have two drugs from this plant ephedrine and pseudoephedrine these two drugs are acting like uh, mixed acting sympathomimetics so they can release the noradrenaline from the storage vesicles as well as they can directly activate the adrenergic receptors. So they are acting like mixed acting sympathomimetics. These drugs can produce so many activities like the cardiac stimulation, bronchodilatation. But because of the side effect profile, these drugs are mainly used as an nasal decongestants. Next one is a podophilotoxin. Podophilotoxin is coming from the podophyllum peltatum. And this podophilotoxin can inhibit the topoisomerase 2 enzyme thereby it inhibits the DNA replication and this podophilotoxin can be used as an anti-cancer agent and the semi-synthetic analogs of the podophilotoxin are the etoposide and teniposide. Again these two drugs are going to inhibit the topoisomerase 2 enzyme and found useful in the treatment of cancer. Next one is the campothecin. Campothecin is coming from the Campothecia acuminata. This campothecin can inhibit the topoisomerase 1. Again, topoisomerase 1 is uh, important in the DNA replication. In this way, campothecins are also acting like an anti-cancer agents. And we have two synthetic derivatives like the topotican and irinotican related to the campothecins. Again, these two drugs are going to inhibit the topoisomerase 1 and used in the treatment of cancer. Now, let us see the drugs coming from the fungal and other cultures. We have so many types of drugs like the mycophenolic acid, cyclosporin, tacrolimus, cyrolimus, all these are the different drugs coming from the various cultures and these drugs are acting like immunosuppressants. Similarly, we have so many other drugs like the griseofalvin which is coming, which is acting like an antifungal agent 
and other drugs like the penicillin, streptomycin, chloramphenicol, tetracyclines, vancomycin and a lot of drugs acting like antibacterials. All these are coming from the various cultures of the bacterium as well as fungal cells. So, so many antibiotics are obtained from the various cultures the, and the list is not limited. In this way, we have a lot of drugs in our uh, medical world which are coming from the natural source. And in this video, we have covered so many drugs which are coming from the natural source which are having some related synthetic or semi-synthetic derivatives. And this is not the end of the list of natural products. So many drugs still available as naturally, but I have tried to compile so many drugs uh, coming from the natural source here. We have not included the antibiotics because many of the antibiotics are coming from the natural source uh, from the culture media. So when we know which type of drug is coming from the natural source, it will be very easy for us to identify what is the structural similarity between the natural drug and with the synthetic or semi-synthetic products. And we can see that how the nature is going to supply so many types of drugs so that we can have synthetic and semi-synthetic products in, in our medical world. Hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you like, please subscribe to our channel, share this video and post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching.